Hello and welcome, this is Afshin Ratansi and Yvonne Ridley joining you from onboard HMS President broadcasting from the heart of London. Yes, from the world's only floating TV studio, we bring you a massive show which looks at mass movements, mass arrests and mass protests. It seems we're not the only ones rocking the boat. This woman is one of the co-founders of the Stop the War Coalition, which mobilised two million people to protest about the impending war in Iraq back in 2003. But can the coalition do it again for their latest campaign to get British troops out of Afghanistan? And what about these images of student unrest? A peaceful message to the British coalition government turned into an ugly riot. We're joined by a student activist who warns there could be more unrest on the way if university fees take further education out of the reach of the poor. The British Prime Minister was forced to watch the chaos on TV on his way to the G20 summit amidst an international economic crisis. And we speak to a financial expert. Just how big is the UK's debt? All of this and so much more on the show, which rocks the boat. Just recently, we shone a light on a little-known story about how the immigrant community of the Swedish city of Malmo was in the grip of fear after 50 shooting incidents during a 12-month period. One of the criticisms was that the police and the media had ignored the racial aspects to the serial sniper's shooting spree. Well, what we can tell you now is that there has been a dramatic new development since our story. A 38-year-old man has been arrested and charged with a series of racially motivated shootings. We'll keep you informed with future events surrounding this case. Another story which rarely makes the headlines anywhere are the challenges and injustices faced by the people of the Western Sahara, who have been fighting for independence from Morocco for years. But the latest round of clashes have resulted in the deaths of 11 Sahrawi, 723 injured and 159 missing as a direct result of the destruction of the Gadaimizik protest camp outside Leun a few days ago. Welcome, Lamine. Now then, can you tell us about this latest development and why aren't we reading about this in the mainstream media? Well, I think, uh, you know, the whole issue is the occupation of Morocco to the Western Sahara for the last 35 years. And the people, they just, you know, been fed up and frustrated and they st stage, you know, civil uh, protest in the, of 20,000 people. They set up a camps outside of uh, Layoun and uh, they express this message to everyone, to Morocco and to the world that, you know, they're fed up and they would like their right to be respected, their political, economic and social economic uh, 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 right to be respected. And also they uh, use this civilized, peaceful way f uh, for the first time in the last 35 years. And suddenly uh, Morocco, you know, uh, stormed the camp and they used um, really uh, the army, the police, gendarme, and uh, they, they attacked the camps, you know, in a more barbaric way and to undermine the uh, negotiation, continue, uh, negotiation uh, which is going on. Were journalists covering these clashes? Um, uh, some of them tried to, to do their best, but Morocco prior to that they have kicked out all the journalists and also they have banned uh, Spanish journalists from getting in and also some journalists they were attending a, a trial in Casablanca in a few few weeks ago and they've been even beaten by 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 the Moroccans and also the mm, diplomats and and politicians they were banned from visiting the area now it's really chaotic and, and it's ended in something like 19 dead including some children and small boys and also uh, more than 1,000 people uh, wounded and the disappearance of 163. And the worst thing is that Morocco even using the settlers mm -hmm. and they are uh, beating people in the street and they are burning down houses and uh, looting uh, shops of the Sahrawi. Well, what's uh, behind the timing? What's behind the timing? Because uh, the United States, well, Moscow or Washington aren't really looking uh, at Western Sahara since the James Baker days. Why, why is Morocco doing I this now? I think, as you know, after the visit of uh, Ambassador uh, Christopher Ross, the special envoy of uh, Ban Ki-moon to the Western Sahara, I have called for a uh, meeting in New York. 
uh, between Polisario and, and Morocco to continue this um, informal talk. And Morocco tried to uh, undermine that, and they tried really to cancel that meeting by, you know, staging, you know, these uh, attacks. This current situation. What exactly. about Polisario then? Because I know Polisario has had a lot of defections yourself, your movement, isn't it, to Morocco? Uh, that is not a problem because as a liberation movement in 35 years, people who believe in the objective of freedom and independence and uh, freedom of expression and the right of self-determination as being called by United Nations in different resolution, I think that is uh, fine to, to fight for down, that. If, if Nelson Mandela let you down, for instance. If anyone who is not believing in that, they are free to, to, to do whatever they want. And but the struggle is continue, and the, the proof to that is the exactly these people are united to fight to, to fight against occupation. Is there a role for South Africa? Of course, South Africa, the whole world, South Africa, Nigeria, and the whole world are called now to intervene quickly to save the people in the occupied territory. But the reality is, let me.